Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon. It's Monday the 12th of April. It's this week in WordPress, 2 p.m. UK time. I'm joined, as always, by my good friend Paul Lacey, who's the co-host of the show. And I don't know, Paul, if you want to take over the introductions for our two lovely guests today. Sure. Well, we've got a repeat of a couple of weeks ago, haven't we? So sure. it doesn't it doesn't normally happen like that, that we have the same two panellists on. Uh, and the, at the same time, so um, Anne and Joe, it's not normally like that. Uh, it's um, so Anne, if you're wondering if Joe's a permanent panelist, and Joe, you wonder if Anne is that they're not. It's just uh, it's just a but, but it's a really good coincidence because we've got some great stuff to talk about. And so to to give you both an introduction that probably won't do you justice, um, we have Anne, for, who is developer relations wrangler working for Automatic, and you are focused apparently on the WordPress.org space and leading the full site outreach program efforts, which we're going to talk about today. And we've also got Joe Casabona, who is a podcaster educator developer and helps people launch podcasts and create content and has recently switched to using Wix. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Um, we'll find out more about that. That's story fake news. Just, yeah, that's that is fake news. Fake news. <laughs> that's actual <laughs> fake news. That's the first real, real, real piece news, of fake yeah. news. I couldn't, I couldn't hold it across. in for too long. Yeah. <laughs> right, the tweet's already gone viral and the uh, correction will not. <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, just before we begin, if you wouldn't mind, it would be really helpful, you know, just just move away from the, this screen just for a moment and share what we're doing over on whatever platform you're using. If you go to wpbuilds.com forward slash live, you can find us over there, wpbuilds.com forward slash live. That You've got to be logged into Google to comment, but we'd appreciate it if you did. Or if you're in our Facebook group, you can go over there, wpbuilds.com forward slash Facebook and just hunt around until you see the live video, which will be playing somewhere, shape or form. Comments are open. Um, if you'd like to give us a comment, feel free to do so. Thank you to those people who drop in and give us a comment. Sometimes I we talk about them, sometimes we just sort of leave them out because we just want to keep the conversation going. But we're going to talk today about the WordPress news for the week beginning. Now, what was it? I think it was the 5th of April. So during the last seven days, and actually quite a lot has happened during the last seven days. And we'll come to that in just a moment because I'm going to share my screen first. Let me see if I can get this right because I often get it wrong. There we go. I think I deployed that successfully. WPBuilds.com is the website where we produce all of the content and we put it up there. We've got a podcast episode you can see, number 224 over there at the moment. Um, that's probably all I'm going to say this week. Let's just get stuck right into it with our first piece. And the first piece today is not what we wanted to talk about. This is something that occurred, to, well, I, I, I discovered it on uh, Facebook, I believe it was last night, um, but I feel it probably deserves top of the show. Uh, but I am gonna give it over to to Paul. Is a, is a tough one. Uh, we we had some sad news, uh, a friend of the show, uh, Paneet Sahalot, uh, passed away yesterday in a car accident. I'm never good at speaking about these things. So <laughs> thanks, Nathan, for passing that over to me. But oh, I'm sorry, a really good guy. It's all right. It's all right. A, re oh. a really good guy. And uh, he he'll be, he'll be greatly missed. And so sorry, Pony, I know you're listening out there somewhere uh, up there. So sorry, I'm doing such a bad job of um, trying to give you a couple of words here. But I think we wanted to dedicate this uh, episode to Pony. Uh, and so hopefully it will get better than I'm doing at this moment. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's hard. I actually this, texted Paul last yeah, night and yeah. I think maybe I was, I was working on his plugin at this, at this time as well. Yeah. I was literally using his product, which is uh, PowerPack. I think most people know um, if you use Beaver Builder or Elementor, that it's got an add-on pack called uh, PowerPack. And it gives you some extra features in Beaver Builder or into Elementor. And man, it was so shocking to hear that. Mm -hmm. Really, really young guy, really, really good hero in WordPress and done a lot of good things. And you, you only hear good things said about it, said about him. So, mm. yeah, thank you, Paul. Sorry, I didn't realize you were going to struggle to, to, to do that I. one. But <laughs> I actually met him at WordCamp in Berlin. I was lucky enough to meet him. We did actually sit down and have a beer together. I know that a few people that I know did the same thing. And uh you know, it's hard to judge somebody in the space of a few minutes, but every interaction that I had with him on Facebook Messenger, where it largely was 
was very cordial. He was a very, very humble is probably the word I want to reach for. Really felt like a very humble guy. And then when I met him in person, that that sort of uh, veneer uh, proved to be true. He really was an ex- extremely humble guy. He's, you know, he's done quite a lot in the short space of time. He was working with the Beaver Builder plugin that he's got. And he, he, he just didn't big himself up or mention it or try to be pushy. He was just very polite, deferential, and uh, just a really nice chap. So in as much as we don't dedicate these episodes, we're dedicating this one. So, uh, Puni, um, I hope I hope all is well, as it were. If, if Anne or Joe want to contribute to that, that's fine. If not, we'll just crack on with the rest of the show. I'll just say that I, I hope someone carries on his work. Um, when Alex Mills died that was one thing that i really appreciated is that people were dedicated to carrying on his legacy and his work and i think that's the beauty of the wordpress community is that that can happen um and his impact can live on beyond his life um mm-hmm. and i'm all about feeling so i i love that you all have have opened your hearts to to sharing about him i think that's really probably will mean a lot to the people who know him well mm-hmm. yeah his uh his company tweeted something really nice uh with a really great picture of him so mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know him personally. I knew his work, and it's it's always a shame to lose somebody, especially I mean, so young and and so dedicated to uh, his craft. So, yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. There's you uh, there's some good um, podcast episodes I think out there. Uh, sorry, now I've got my uh, my act back together. Now, there's I know, I know you you interviewed him I think for WP Builds some years ago, Nathan. As far as I'm I interviewed aware. him for WP Builds, and I also did an interview with him over on WP and Up. Um, where it we talked yeah. on the WP build side, we talked about the product, and on the WP and upside, we talked about life um, and the way that his approach to business and how it might differ in, in in the subcontinent than it does in, say, Europe or North America. And it was quite a, mm. it was a bit of an eye opener. Actually, it was really nice. And again, speaking to a man who really did put, well, he he likened repeatedly the business to a big family. Um, which I thought was quite nice. And, and although that kind of probably could easily roll off the tongue, he demonstrated over and over again during that podcast things which which de- were demonstrative of how business is, is different there than it is here and the way that they, they sort of share meal times and things like that. So if you become part of their team, you become part of the, the, the wider uh, kind of family and do things like share meal times and go to each other's weddings and all of those kind of things. So yeah, it was it was nice. I think um, one of one of the the fun things we all remember from Powerpack uh, and Funny was his kind of uh, perceived war with uh, Brainstorm Force, the kind of the other company that also had a a add on pack for Beaver Builder. It was unit. It was uh, UABB versus Powerpack, and there was some quite public you know sort of healthy competition that used to go on in some of the forums and it would push both of those products uh, forward and we did uh, so so far as we know um sujay and paneet sujay is the uh, ceo of a brains on force were pretty good friends in uh, by the end of it so there was a lot of healthy competition they pushed each other's products forward but they were good friend good friends in the end so that was that was good to hear and when you see this kind of, you know, the the Wix versus WordPress, the competition there, sometimes you've got to push those things aside. I remember that there's people working working at these companies uh, representing them. So competition is all good, but, you know, keep it classy. Nice. And those guys did. Yeah. yeah, nice. Okay, let's move on, get on with the the sort of show as it normally happens. Um, and you mentioned Wix and Squarespace. So let's jump right in because... This is this is such an interesting thing that's happened during the course of this week. Um, I believe Joe uh, is the best place to to take on this story because he actually is in possession of a pair of expensive headphones. That sounds like crazy talk, but I don't know, Joe, if you just want to sort of tell us what this story is all about. I'm showing WP Tavern at the minute, but we'll shortly, as soon as you get into it, I'll show your post all about it. Yeah, so uh, I guess to give a quick high-level overview of, of what happened, um, back in January, uh, a representative from Wix started uh, reaching out to uh, technology influencers was the term he used. It was a lot of people in the WordPress space, me included. Uh, and he he said that, um, or they said uh, that they want to 
uh, send technology influencers uh, a, a special kind of swag thing um, for a a marketing concept, a unique marketing concept. So I decided that 2021 would be the year of opportunity for me. I would have <laughs> said no to this. Like, I don't need another T-shirt that I'm not going to wear. Uh, but I said, why not? I have a P.O. box and I'll have to give the person my home address. Uh, so I said yes. And a few months later, people started getting these packages labeled top secret. Here's a message from you from WP. And you open it up and it is a pair of $400 Bose noise canceling headphones. So not a, not a t-shirt. And if you scan the QR code, you're brought to a website. It's this fella pretending to be WordPress. And he's saying like Wix is launching a, a smear campaign against me and we know each other. We've been through it all. I don't want you to believe any of it. Um, and as all of these people started tweeting these headphones, uh, a, a, uh, I'm going to say a negative ad campaign, right? It highlights the bad stuff in WordPress um, or the perceived bad things about WordPress uh, started coming out. And the reaction even before these ads came out was pretty strong. Why is Wix sending people headphones? Do they think that uh, I can be bought? Is was something I read a lot. Like, I'm not going to start using Wix because you sent me headphones. And so I, I, I'm a recipient of these headphones, but I, uh, uh, there are a few things that I wanted to unpack here, and which I do in this blog post, right? Is Wix bad for the negative campaign? And unfortunately, negative campaigns work, right? The, it, I read a book called Contagious by uh, Jonah Berger, fantastic book. And he talks about the things that get people to share. Uh, and it's the things that tap into the emotions, right? So the really, really happy, right? I saw a video of uh, of these glasses that were made for for. Uh, babies who are blind and and then they could see and like that reaction like i cried i won't i'm not gonna front um that's like shareable content right it makes you feel really good but the negative stuff also works and we've seen how effective that is um and so i think that highlighting they identified pain points in wordpress i don't think they're lying i didn't watch all of the ads but they're not lying about the i, I assume they did a bunch of user research right so uh, they they said, what problems do you have with WordPress? And then they use those talking points. Were some of the uh, videos tone deaf? Maybe a little bit, right? There's one where like WordPress, the WordPress character is like in, a, in, a, in an abusive relationship with his user and they're in therapy and in a year where record numbers of adults, including myself, sought therapy uh, for, for anxiety. Um, you know, I think they, cut, they could have made that point better, right? I say like, they could have showed a user update their WordPress site and then their whole day is, is just blown up because they're fixing a broken WordPress site because they updated it. Um, so there was, there's that portion of it, right? It, I think the ads are tone deaf, but they, they definitely know who they're targeting. And on, on that note, they are not targeting the, the word, the long-term WordPress users like me, right? They sent me headphones cause they knew I would tweet about it and it got people talking about it. Uh, and they could have spent a way more money on like a Super Bowl ad, right? Yeah. Where it was like one and done. But now it's a week later and we're still talking about it. Um, that said, the WordPress community is justified in their frustration, right? It's 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 never fun to be uh, on the other end of criticism. But I, I say in my post, I think it's a little bit hypocritical, right? Um, it's okay for... Uh, me, a WordPress user, to smugly say, why are you using Squarespace when you can own your platform, right? Or why are you using that hosting company? They're bad. Um, or, you know, uh, the whole Jamstack, the whole Jamstack drama that happened in August, right? Um, so if you're going to dish it out, you should be able to take it. And, uh, you know, on, on that same token, our reaction should not be anger, right? In, in Matt's post, uh, he called Wix a roach motel. Um, I, I don't think that was the best reaction. What we can do is say, okay, uh, yeah, maybe WordPress is hard to update, but we are working on that, right? In 5.6, it's a lot easier to mm. update WordPress. Okay, maybe the security stuff is hard. We have a site health checker now where we talk about those things. And in 5.7 we rolled out 
uh, easy transfer to SSL. Um, and and so uh, and and he and and Matt rightly points out that like you can't export in Wix, right? That's a pain point that we've identified that we have a good solution for because ultimately that's what we care about that, right? This is actually right on the screen right now. Um, we do care about democratizing publishing, uh, and it's why we're open source, and it's why exporting data is so important. And so, uh, if someone goes negative, uh, we should highlight our positives, right? Um, so, I think the community action uh, reaction uh, could have been better. Um, Wix was a little bit tone deaf, but I, you know, I think that what that we don't, we also don't know how much they spent, right? We don't know. Um, and we don't know what their their key performance indicators are either, right? their KPIs. So if it was to get people talking about Wix, this is a hugely successful campaign. If it's to get the people they sent headphones to switch to Wix, probably an ultimate failure. Um, but I, I don't think that that was the case. I, I just find the whole thing extremely bizarre. I have to ask, Joe. What headphones have you got on right now? <laughs> so right now I have my studio monitors on, right? These are the, uh, let's see, the uh, DT770 Pro. So these, uh, you just saw how like terribly long my hair is. Um, <laughs> uh, so these plug right into my interface so I can monitor my audio. When I'm, especially when the kids are awake, I do have noise canceling headphones. And to be honest, uh, I have the Sony wh million numbers four or whatever <laughs> um the latest sony uh headphones and i was i'm a little um disenchanted i'll say by them because multiple device switching is a little difficult and i was seriously considering getting, considering getting the airpods max um even though there's like they're obnoxiously expensive um and then i got these and i was like great uh, i mean i was kind of looking at new headphones and now i got them so i'm happily using them and um, and that was the other thing, you know, I think it's a little, I don't, I don't generally like to, to use the word privileged or whatever. Uh, we all have like different backgrounds and things like that, but anybody who's like, well, um, oh, you sent me these headphones. I'm not even going to use them. Like, dude, somebody sent you a $400 gift. If you don't want it, like re-gift it. Yeah. Don't be, don't be, you know, I teach my toddler, be grateful when someone gives you something, no matter what it is. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to give my Sony headphones to my brother who doesn't have the same multi-device switching problem that I do. Put a WordPress sticker in when you send them. Yeah, I will. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thing that I, I sat down and did a back of the postage um, postcard kind of calculation, and I, I figured based upon what I knew of the numbers, and I actually think I worked it out on the basis of them costing £300. Um, I think it was th the cost of the equipment was £30,000. Um, which is not an inconsiderable amount of money. You know, this is kind of like you can cover a salary of a teacher yeah. for an entire year for this kind of money. And and I think that's where my where it sticks in my throat is it's okay. Uh, like you said, Joe, on if purely looking for the hashtag Wix being spread a billion times, slam dunk success, total win. From the point of view of squandered money, this is a really good example of that because. I I would be more or less 100% certain to say not one of the people they sent them to even went to the Wix homepage to see what it was all about. But that can't have been the point. I'm, I'm just really curious. It must have been a play on just getting some eyeballs on a hashtag or, a, you know, getting people to just discuss them and make them relevant for a, a couple of weeks. And here we are. I, I do think it worked too, because I, yeah. I mean, when we, I think Joe, you touched on this in the post, it's like when you step outside of, you know, the always WordPressers, like you hear this a lot. And I actually, when I was doing freelance work, I lost a nonprofit. I say I lost, but like this nonprofit one day called me up. I'd been volunteering with them for free um, for like five or six years. Uh, and they switched to Wix and I tried to convince them. I tried to, to tell them all about open source. I like had an hour long call with the board. Like I was like, had a PowerPoint presentation and they were like, look, we just, we don't want to deal with the headaches of WordPress. And um, I think a lot about the Maya Angelou quote of um, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And I think about that in the context of WordPress. Like how does using WordPress feel? And, and the thing that I think is so tricky with this is 
open source, you don't feel things when you're using open source, <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't necessarily have something tangible in your hands. And, um, until a decision point happens, until you have to, until your site goes down, until you have to migrate into whatever it is. But like mm. for 90% of the time, you're not feeling like, yes, I'm using open source. <laughs> you know, you're just feeling, um, you know, I have to update my site. I have to change the header and like whatever makes it easier. And I think this is one thing Matt has spoken about is we need to make open source uh, better than the alternatives and the closed source alternatives. And to me, I see this as a great chance to, to step up. And one thing that gives me hope is uh, Josefa actually posted about this um, last week, I think she's looking to bring in some marketing professionals to help the WordPress community and to help the marketing team, um, especially as you know, now we're at 40% of the web or whatever it is. Um, how do we have control of our, of our narrative? And what, what is the WordPress voice when it comes to marketing? And I don't think it's going to be anything like Wix, um, which gives me <laughs> a lot of pride. Like, I think this is my biggest takeaway was I'm very proud to be a part of the WordPress community and not, um, I feel bad for for folks who might work at Wix and might not agree with the ads. I did watch all of them as well. Um, and they're, they're pretty brutal. Like it's, I'm also in therapy. So I was like, whoa, <laughs> like that was just like really a, a weird line to cross. And, and the whole idea of playing with an abusive relationship, um, especially when domestic abuse is on the rise right now. Like I just was like, this is really, um, some people are trapped at home with a, an actual abusive relationship. Like you need to be really careful with those kinds of ads. Um, but they did touch on, on the pain points of how WordPress feels. And I, you can't, you know, you can't, um, to, uh, to me, that's a chance to, to step up and do better and to, to kind of pay attention to that. Like to, it kind of was like, they gave us free, free information of like, oh yeah, people still are worried about security or updates or, or what have you, even though core just rolled out auto updates and has like a whole new system where you don't have to worry about that. Like that, they were still able to play with that dynamic, which was really interesting. I wonder if the, the actual ads themselves cost significantly more than the cost of the headphones. I'm imagining that's you a good point. Yeah. yeah, that must have cost a bucket load of money to get people to, you know, actors in a room and a film, film set and all of that kind of stuff must have been really expensive. Yeah, the, especially um, depending on when they when they shot it too. But mm -hmm. I just keep thinking like a 30 second Super Bowl ad, which I'm pretty sure they've run before, right? Would have cost them like millions, tens yeah. of, right? Yeah. Um. And I want to touch on your point because I think it's really good that we're bringing in that we WordPress um, is is bringing in uh, marketing professionals because uh, the messaging is so important. I read a, uh, an interesting piece after the 2020 election about messaging and, and what works and what falls flat. And, um, you know, like Joe Biden's messaging really worked in 2016. Trump's worked because it said make America great again. They made it about the voters. Whereas in previous campaigns, right, uh, the the I'm with her, um, like Hillary Clinton's I'm with her for a while, made it more about uh, about the candidate than about the people. And I think when we say, but WordPress is open source, we're making it more about WordPress. Whereas we need to say, but hey, uh, you won't be locked in, right? Like it, it, you can move your stuff. Or I always if, try to describe it as like the life of your site. And yes. Matt that has was like, and but that means there's a death. And I'm like, okay, fine, fine, fine. But like the idea <laughs> is that like it can grow with you. Um, I yeah. tried to sell him on this at one point. And yeah, but I, I love I that's how I explain it. So I'm like, if you're if you start with just a blog and then you want to move to a store and then you're you blow up and you have like this amazing, you know, whatever translated in five different languages, like you can do all of that with WordPress and people get that clicks where it's like, right. oh, cool, like be like having a shoe that grows with you throughout your life. Yeah. Like, that's amazing. Of course I'd invest in that, but and it's that, hard like, to feel it, you know? Yeah. And that paints like a super optimistic picture, right? Like you're here now, but you can be here. And that's what WordPress does for you, right? I wonder if they... They should, they should just yeah. hire us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The pair of you. Yeah, Dom. Yeah, it sounds good. I wonder if they'd have hired, or paid for a teacher's salary for a year, would we be talking about it? If they put out a press release saying Wix has paid for a teacher's salary in such and such a school, it'd be like, okay, thanks. That's really good. Yeah, Moving that's on. interesting. Yeah. Um, but it worked. Uh, we've got a couple of comments here. Chris, um, Chris Hughes saying that um, it's interesting that he managed to get a salty reply out of Matt, probably the icing on the cake for them. Yeah, it's interesting that. I wonder if the the fact that they did get the salty reply from Matt. And and that uh, if you see the post on mattma.tt, um, go and have a look at that. It doesn't it doesn't sound like the Matt that we're familiar with. It, it almost sounds like he had to sort of constrain himself before he hit publish and possibly retype some things. Um, it sounded like he was bordering on getting a bit cross, which you don't normally see in the public arena with Matt. 
Paul, we've left you out of this one. Did you have anything you wish to throw in? I was just enjoying listening to the discussion. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of like the money spent on the campaign, I think uh, this this year and last year, there hasn't been so many avenues for marketing budgets to be spent in the traditional way. So it doesn't surprise me that there's some more creative and more kind of guerrilla sort of marketing tactics going on. And, you know, yeah, it probably was quite... The, I didn't actually watch the videos. I, I didn't I didn't watch hardly any of them. I think I watched like the first 10 seconds of one of them and I just knew what it was all going to be about. But um, I think that it, it feels like this is the sort of marketing campaign I, idea that happened at, you know, Christmas party 2019 or something when, you know, the CEO was drunk <laughs> or something and there was a stupid idea and they just hired, you know, someone's um, cousin as, as an intern and gave them a job to do something creative and crazy. And this is what happened in the end. Um, the the thing, the thing is, I, I mean, a couple of years ago, I was at a an international cricket match between England and India at Edgbaston in Birmingham. And um, the entire pitch in between plays had GoDaddy projected on it. So the money, I can't even imagine the money that, that, that it must be spent to, to have that, which is broadcast around the world um, on TV as well, having the entire pitch, having the logo on there and everything. So I think like the 30,000, I know we can equate it to different things like teacher salaries and much better things that money in general can be spent on but it doesn't <clears throat> it's not it's not something that matters to the to the companies because they're competing for um to make their platform um as well known as possible and social buzz is a big thing and mm -hmm. <clears throat> they they did a good job of making a a lot of noise about wix and like joe said they've not really probably converted anyone um, but they got in the conversation for over a week. And th the bizarre thing was um, I helped a friend, uh, one of Lindsay, my wife's friends, actually, Kelly, uh, with her website just this week, uh, last, last week, actually. And um, her website is on Wix. And actually what she wanted to do was she, uh, she, need, she needed another domain pointing out the website so that two domains would end up on the website and then also have an email address set up with the new domain. And I was, you know, I'm the nominated person to help with that kind of thing. And I, <laughs> you know, jumped on a Zoom call with Kelly. We logged into her Wix account. And guess what? You could do the domain within within the panel easily. And they've they've hooked up with Google Mail. You can even just create your Google Mail account right there in the Wix panel, and then there's your website. We didn't actually need to edit the website, thankfully, because I know last time I did help her with that. It was awful. The Wix, the Wix user experience was terrible, but the onboarding experience for the other things a business owner needs to do in and around just the techie bits that people like us are interested in and go, you know, oh, don't use this page builder because, you know, it leaves short codes. Oh, don't use this because you can't do that. The business owner doesn't care about that. They're just like, I want my email hooked up to that and I want the domain going there. And, oh, today I've heard Web Vitals. What does that mean? Can we make the website faster? And obviously that, you know, so I don't know where I'm going with this point, um, but also I'll say <laughs> that um, I, I've also got a pair of Sony um, XM4s, uh, Joe, and they are, they're not as good as the bows, which I'm wearing here, which I didn't get given. I bought these um, for switching between different devices. And that's why I'm wearing these because I was having trouble with the audio just before we came on. And I knew I put the bows on and I'll just be connected to my laptop, whatever. Uh, but yeah, that's a different point. But yeah, the point on, on, on the platform, right? Wix has got a platform and it is consistent. It might not be very good for, from, from what a lot of us think, and but they can improve it and so can Squarespace and so can Shopify. Now, one of the items that we're moving on to a minute is around Cadence getting bought out by iThemes or Liquid Web. And we can move to that in a minute, but Whereas, you know, a lot of users come to WordPress and they try and build their ingredients together, they get into trouble if they don't have the knowledge. But Wix doesn't need to have a fight with 
uh, Matt Mullenweg, Wix needs to be fighting against the hosts that are creating the platforms that will genuinely compete with Wix and Squarespace and push them out of the market because as soon as those platforms exist where you can do everything and you've got the block editor or you, the built-in page builder or whatever you've got, then Wix is going to start looking looking like it's in trouble more than ever, I think. so. That's, Just, that's we'll thoughts. round this one off quickly with Lee Jackson's comment. He said, there's room for Wix, and it seems to me its target demographic are people who want to do it themselves as much as they can. Uh, WordPress excels where developers and designers use it to deliver a quality service where people want to pay for others uh, to do the hard work. Wix are creating a fight because it's a classic marketing tactic. That is all. Yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, should we segue into the Every, iPhones one right Everyone wins, now? though. Yeah. In this situation, WordPress gets attention, Wix gets attention. Everybody, everybody's attention. The big loser here was Squarespace, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's, so there's probably, if yeah, Squarespace want to send me some headphones, there's a Squarespace podcast right now making that very point. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, should we? Should we segue? Cut, cut to the cut a few out possibly because of the time and go straight to the cadence one. We can come back to the other ones that we've got on the roster if we need to. This totally caught me by surprise. Um, I'm sure that if you've been in the WordPress space for any length of time, last couple of years, there's this theme blocks um, suite which has had a meteoric rise, m more so I think than just about any other company that I can think of. M maybe. Maybe Elementor fits in that bill. But I've heard more and more about Cadence as the weeks have gone on. And, and, and I was pretty sure that it would be a fairly valuable property by now. Um, we had Ben Rittner on the podcast about a year ago. And just a year ago, it was him and his sister. And I know that that is now no longer the case. Anyway, during the last week, I don't know how long this has been negotiated. I don't, I don't know how much money changed hands. But I'm imagining that Cadence is worth quite a bit based upon the the sort of the, the sort of journey that they've had recently. They've sold to iThemes, and this took me by surprise because I I just didn't see iThemes as being uh, relevant in this space anymore. I know that years ago they were they had their own builder technology. I think it, in fact it was called Builder if I remember right. They had a picture of a hard hat, didn't they, as their as their platform. And but they've bought Cadence. Um, if you go to the iThemes post that you can see here then you'll see, you'll hear all about it. It's a sort of a acquisition. They're acquiring the people. Uh, as always, the case is stated that they're hoping not to disrupt anything, that people who've got current memberships can go on. Um, I, I actually have a kind of lifetime one, so I'm hoping that that's going to be the case. And um, yeah, just quite shocked. And then Joe uh, earlier, before we hit record, and Paul as well, informed me, of course, that iThemes has a has a big a big parent in the background, um, and it's Flywheel. Have I said that? Is that the right no, one? Liquid Web. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm so sorry. As, as I was saying, I knew I'd got it wrong. Anyway, Liquid <laughs> Web. Um, fascinating story. I've no idea what amount of money changed hands, but if you're if you're in this space, it it just goes to show blocks are hot, really hot at the moment. So the floor is open. Anybody that wants to dive in, go for it. I would I would say I, I don't necessarily think it's it's blocks that is the um is the reason as such. Uh, there is another article that we've got that we've partnered with this article, which is a recent podcast on the YouGurus uh, website by Brent Weaver, and it's an interview with Brian Gardner, who was the um, founder of Studio Press, who were acquired by WP Engine approximately two years ago. And he's um, he talks in this interview a lot about the that it wasn't that let's say you go back ten years when something like Studio Press started and iThemes started because Studio Press and iThemes were um, you know big competitors to each other that they were starting these companies to grow and not with an idea to sell out to a hosting company or something like that and in fact iThemes has gone to Liquid Web and Studio Press has gone to Doyp Engine. And Brian is talking two years on from that acquisition now that he's left the whole situation completely now. And he's talking about um, how these hosting companies are, what I said a minute ago, looking to build platforms. So if you um, pop back onto the iThemes page again, um, Nathan, just for a sec, mm -hmm. uh, you can see that they have hosting 
uh, back up a minute, sorry. Uh, they have um, a backup solution. They have security solution. They have a dashboard sync. They've got a plugin suite. They've got training documents. They've acquired um, Restrict Content Pro recently. So I wouldn't be surprised to see more things. And to me, um, iThemes is basically Liquid Web's talent agency now. I just see iThemes as a, a brand that, that had some people with huge knowledge about the whole ecosystem liquid web bought them and iThemes job now is to go and start making those deals and bringing those people in and building that platform so that liquid web a bit like uh, GoDaddy has got a deal with uh, automatic for some of the WooCommerce stuff so you can get some of those things built into that platform uh, liquid web has got stuff built into this now <clears throat> if you buy WP engine you get the um, the Genesis framework. You get the uh, Atomic. I think they're called the, the Genesis Atomic blocks block. now. Genesis maybe. blocks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Genesis yeah. Blocks. Uh, <clears throat> so so does this platform platform stuff getting getting built and and there's going to be more and more of it because at the moment and then you've got Elementor on the flip side who instead of being acquired by a host look like they're trying to build a host hosting aspect to their their thing with with a cloud much like Drupy MU have done as well so you can just see that the financial side of the industry is at such a critical point at the moment and um, that's how I see it I just see that this is the just another example of the platform building and the hosting company will put a lot of money into this and I think that the products will probably improve because I imagine Ben is has been juggling all sorts of jobs while he's been kind of building this up in the last year and he and his team can get back to building the features again and um i, I hope anyway joe before yeah. we press record I, I feel that you said that you had some input on this because you you maybe knew the the teams around this was that right yeah yeah so i mean um i've been following liquid web in general pretty closely since um chris lemma joined in um, and, uh, from there they built a managed WordPress platform. Then they built a managed WooCommerce platform. Then they acquired iThemes and iThemes cadence, uh, comes hot off the heels, right. Of, um, or I guess lukewarm off the heels of acquiring, um, uh, the acquisition of research content pro and WP complete, uh, which is this sort of, uh, LMS esque mm -hmm. thing where you can, uh, allow course creation without having the full kind of lifter or, or learn dash experience. Um, so iThemes does offer hosting at a relative cheaper uh, price than, um, than, than liquid web or Nexus, right? Liquid web also owns Nexus. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think probably liquid web Nexus has the managed WooCommerce bit. Uh, iThemes probably moving into some sort of, educational or membership space and this is their mo right the, the iThemes membership uh gets you all of the plugins but it also gets you the training side of things i just did a nine hour training session with them over three days for their members only so um i think that if we look at iThemes a year from now uh they'll probably have some sort of offering where iThemes hosting you get cadence which i think was a smart move right because it's like a essentially a gutenberg native um, mm -hmm. page builder um, you get restrict content pro and you get WP complete and then you can build a great membership or course site right in iThemes uh, so that's that's I think if I had to guess right and, and we see the same thing happening right it's kind of like a blueprint right WP engine bought flywheel uh, and and then they bought studio press um, GoDaddy uh, bought uh, Jilt and uh, all of Skyverge, right? So all of their WooCommerce offerings and things like that. So, um, you know, I think uh, I think that Paul, as you said, this is the direction we're moving in. Uh, hosting companies are becoming platforms. If you want bare hosting, go with Linode or DigitalOcean. If you want an easy way to manage a complex WordPress site, you go with one of these hosts that we've just mentioned. Yeah, good point. One of the um, big concerns that, yeah, I was about to say, what's been on my mind is is moving between. So I used to work on Vault Press, which is a backup and restore solution. And 
sometimes people would, you could use it to migrate hosts. And um, sometimes things would go wrong because the host would have some sort of weird configuration that we'd have to fix on the other side. Um, but in all of this, if everyone's building their own platform, how, how do we maintain the promise of open source where you have control of your content and you can move it around? Um, and I was really happy to see how Cadence is so um, intentionally made sure it, it's compatible with, with, with the Gutenberg and the core editor, because I think that's a key part of this. But you could see differences happen where if someone, if a platform wanted to kind of go more into a direction where it's harder to move and you'd have to continue to use their products, it makes me nervous. Um, so for anyone listening who's on the other side of these things, I'd encourage everyone to think about movement between, especially even movement too, right? Because you could be moving into a host. How easy do you make it for that to, for that to happen? Um, but yeah, my brain immediately went to, oh my gosh, how would migrating a site go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it, it does speak of sort of siloed versions of WordPress, doesn't it? You know, if you go over here because you've got the membership, the iThemes membership s platform, oh, you go over here, you've got something else and over here is something else. It, yeah, makes makes that a bit difficult, but I yeah. guess it's it's Wix. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. It's like, how do we avoid doing that to ourselves? Yeah. And how do we make yeah. sure we're, we're fulfilling the promise of open source? Because my dad actually got, um, I'm not going to say which one, but he got stuck on a marketing style platform. And I, it was, a, he basically, it was almost impossible to move him. It was based on WordPress, but it was built on top. And um, I had huh. to spend hours trying to get a, uh, basically a backup and then translate the backup into something that I could use to restore to a different site. So it's, it's, it happens in, internally and it's something I think to be mindful of with these sorts of things popping up. Yeah. I'm guessing though that the, the price will be, you know, you won't have to pay for cadence or restrict content pro. You'll just pay the, in a sense, let's say it's $29 or something like that. You pay this one fee on a monthly basis, which is very profitable for the hosting company, but all of the other stuff just gets bundled in and, you know, if you've used a managed WordPress host, you you know what it looks like. They've got their own little icons in the dashboard and they have their caching and everything thrown in there. And there's a membership button pre-installed and you're off to the races. Yeah, it looks like if you're a an iThemes user um, and you were in some way using their, their themes, they are going to sort of sunset all of those. I can't remember the date. I've got a feeling it's like a year off or something like that. So hopefully anybody still using the iThemes side of things to theme. Seems funny, doesn't it? I themes, and yet we haven't yeah. heard about them doing theming for the longest time. I think yeah. they say that in the article. They're like, "Yeah, I know we've yeah. been away from themes." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a very like 2007 name, isn't it? Because yeah. like came out around the same time as the iPhone, and then I themes. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Naming. I mean, I'm, that's not a criticism. Naming is hard. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah. That's an interesting story. Well, congratulations to Ben. Anyway, I'm sure Ben and his team have have um, profited mightily, mightily from that. And honestly, when I interviewed him, it was a thoroughly nice guy. Uh, so I had to, good luck to you, Ben. I hope it all works out for the best. Um, okay, the next one, which is totally related to this, Paul. Do you, do you want to lead on the? It probably won't be a very long piece, but the sort yeah, of connected really piece about toolset. Yeah. Yeah, it's just seen, um, you know, and this nicely sort of moves us in a minute onto full site editing. Uh, we've got tool, Toolset, which is a plugin that gives you kind of custom fields, custom uh, custom post type creation, plus custom taxonomy creation. So let's say you want to create a bookshop or something like that, and you want your ISBN number in there and different, you know, different fields about books, and you don't want books to be pages or posts. You want them to be a section in WordPress called books. Well, Toolset allows you to do that, and it's been around for a long, long time. It kind of um, just went everyone was kind of stopped talking about tool set for quite a while, but they are pretty much lead, they've been leading the way for a long time with the block editor in terms of they've just rewritten their entire product to use the block editor for all its layout tools. Cause it used to have a layer of data structure and it used to have a presentation layer and it had its own interface for doing that, which required you to know a little bit of code. But they've switched in the last couple of years to using the block editor and investing a lot of time in that. So Toolset is even more low code than it ever has been before. And it just so happens that an article came out that it's now connected um, its dynamic data sources to the majority of the useful cadence blocks that you would be interested in connecting data to apart from apparently the button block which everybody is apparently in the comments here saying hey can we have um 
you know, because clearly you would want a dynamic source link into a button that might be in a database and link into something else. Apparently that's coming, but it was complicated for some reason. But they seem to be really leading the way as a third party to the whole Gutenberg project in terms of giving us the possibility to do things like create search results, create post templates for different custom post types, uh, search, um, search boxes, 404 pages, all this kind of stuff. Uh, they they are leading the way on that, I think, for, for in terms of being able to use the block editor as for a, an enterprise type level website potentially. I'm just curious as to the fact that a company like Toolset, who create custom post types, custom fields, and all of that kind of stuff, there's a lot more going on, isn't there? It's it's a fairly robust suite mm -hmm. of tools if you want to more or less point and click and well it does a, like you say Paul there's a little bit going on in there that you need to learn but I'm just curious that that they've jumped ship into a block suite as opposed to building out their own blocks I know they've got their own blocks I actually installed it just to see what it looked like and there's I don't know there's half a dozen of their own blocks but they've decided to sort of offload the presentation layer to what they presumably believe is somebody's path for the future of, of, of how people they've done that historically blocks. though haven't they mm. years ago they used they they were not that you know they were one of the first um integrations with, with Beaver Beaver Builder. Builder. i remember That's your right, video I remember that. your, do you remember your video on that that was cl absolute classic video on the beaver builder toolset integration and oh yeah, is that the one where i just constantly got it wrong <laughs> yeah, yeah okay it yeah. was brilliant yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that one yeah, i do yeah yeah um but they and they, you know, you, you would use Toolset, and there was a list of themes that they they made sure worked really, really well with their system. And I think that that's what they're doing now. They're looking at the the popular block sets because it's not just Cadence. They've they've linked up with a few others, but I think um, adding the Cadence blocks into the mix is a is a big win for their for their users to um, take on a theme like that, which is known for being really good with things like WooCommerce. And learn, you know, an LMS type site. So if you think, you know, I want to try a new site, I want to maybe WooCommerce or a bit of an LMS, but I want to use Toolset. You see all the, you know, they all they've they've ticked all the boxes, and you can give that a go with confidence that both sides have have done a bit of integration work of each other. So mm -hmm. it's progress, I think. That's what it I'm is curious. To me. I'm curious if Anne ever breaks out a thing like Toolset or ACF or anything like that and plays with it. I try to play around with those different, like how people will try to accomplish the same thing that you could accomplish with the block editor. I do like looking at that kind of stuff because um, mm -hmm. it is important to see, like, why would someone choose this over going straight Gutenberg, you know? Um, and a lot of it is just easier setup, especially with uh, ACF blocks. Like that's a, a big one that I, I see people reference where they're like, oh, if you don't want to deal with that, just use this. <laughs> and it's like, how do we make it easier to go kind of core first, you know? Mm -hmm. Joe, anything to add? Joe's, Joe's having a play with the the camera there. Hope, hope yeah, it all's my, well, Joe. Uh, my camera overheated, so I had to go to the beacon, oh. you know. <laughs> okay. Well, I won't I won't pester you because it looks like you're fiddling with the tech. Unless you've got something to say, I'll just press on. No, I think everybody made really good points. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to see what else Cadence ends up doing in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, we will move on in that case. Uh, Paul sort of mentioned this just a moment ago. Um, I feel this is one for perhaps Anne uh, to mention. This yeah. is a piece, just just quickly introduce it. This is a piece over on make.wordpress.org by Joe Seffer um, entitled Full Site Editing Scope for WordPress 5.8. So what's all this about? This is a really exciting post. I am thrilled it's out, um, but it's basically covering... April has two go and no go dates. And this is basically where project leadership is coming together to figure out what will the scope of what's shipped in 5.8 look like and what work can be done between now and then um, to make it possible. And Joseph really wonderfully lays out the plan. And part of the plan is actually this week, um, four different people from Matt, Matthias, Josepha, and Helen are all gonna gather to do a demo and talk about what full sighting looks like right now and then figure out from there what can possibly be included in 5.8. And one of the things I really appreciate in this post is it touches it, I think in this section, it says, yeah, this part of the FSE merge will not change the user's default experience, but will instead 
focus on bringing tools to the extenders in our community so they can experiment with their users in mind. So essentially what that's saying is that 5.8, um, as of now and where things stand, um, is gonna focus on bringing the design tools and the, the tools that like theme authors and plugin authors can actually use. Um, and then 5.9 will be more of the user facing. So it actually gives the extender community time to adapt. Um, and I think that that's, that's gonna be huge. Um, I was kind of, I run the FSC outreach program. So we do a lot of testing and I'm really happy to say that a lot of that testing and feedback that we got um, from people in the community who took the time to test and be involved helped influence these kinds of decisions to figure out what's actually ready and what's not. Um, and I think it mentions if you scroll up perhaps, um, or no, actually, sorry, down. <laughs> Haven't memorized the post. <laughs> um, but yeah, it says the later dates, polishing these components have been moved out of the focus for 5.8 for proper prioritization. And like making the saving flow more intuitive was a big piece of feedback that came up um, in the FSC, FSC average program. So it's, it's really neat to see this. The demo is gonna be this week and I'm very curious to see what comes out of the demo and the discussion. Um, there's another go, no go date uh, at the end of the month on April 27th. These both align with Gutenberg releases as well. Um, and I think after then there'll be a lot more clarity. So stay tuned for end of April and get excited for 5.8. I think this is gonna be really big um, especially because the users um, won't be impacted directly, so to speak, unless they like hyper opt into this, but it allows the extenders to kind of let loose and have fun and see what they can build um, with the new design tools that the, the core team has been working so hard on. Um, and just, can I just give you a chance to plug, well, plug's <laughs> the wrong word, but yeah. just, just talk about the, the outreach program and how people get on board if they're curious to to shape the destiny I would of full site editing. I love to talk about the outreach program. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's so basically the outreach program is dedicated to getting feedback about the full siting experience to the developers who are working on it. And it's also become a bit of an education tool. So people can jump in and just listen um, if they'd rather, or like, you know, keep up to date with the latest stuff without actually testing. But at the core of it, it's about testing the actual experience and go through and go through testing flows. And so I release, um, calls for testing, we're on our, about to start our fifth one this week. Um, it'll actually be on query blocks, which might tie in nicely with another piece. Um, but it's essentially uh, meant to help tie that feedback loop and help help in these decision points to know what's ready and what's not. Um, and you can join, it's very easy. You can join uh, just by jumping into make Slack. So if you search like making WordPress Slack, you'll find a place where you can sign up. And then there's just a dedicated channel um, called FSE Outreach Experiment. The other way you could possibly follow along is uh, following the make test um, site, which is just make.wordpress.org backslash test. I post the calls for testing there. Um, I'm also starting to do some what I call hallway hangouts where people can just jump on and we can chat about um, FSE related items. I just started, did my first one last week, but I'm hoping to do those more in the future to tap into that kind of educational piece and discussion piece. Because I think there's a lot of... Um, I think there's been a lot of uh, curiosity and fear around FSE, and I kind of wanted to mystify that. And I think this post from Josefa does a really good job of, of showing how the community is trying to move forward in a way that allows everyone to come with, um, which is really exciting. I'm going to ask you one more thing on the FSE outreach <laughs> program. Sorry. If somebody comes to, to over to the Make Slack and c commits themselves mentally, I'm going to help out, <laughs> what may be a, a time commitment for something useful to give back to you? What, what would they be actually doing and how long may they give up in minutes or hours i mean how long does it take to read my post i would i would say i try to make the calls for testing um if you're actually going through them five to ten minutes okay. but you have to read the post you have to set up a test site so like in actuality i would safely say like 30 minutes to an hour depending upon your ability and your technical ability but um, one thing i'm also trying to experiment with is possibly holding office hours so people get stuck or need help um, with a test site i can kind of jump in and, and help them out but uh, I haven't done that yet. It's just, it's a lot of work to do the calls for testing and the summary posts and then these high level posts um, on top of everything else. Um, but yeah, I would, I would say 30 minutes to an hour, but any time you can give, even if it's like, yeah, I tried this for 10 minutes and here are my thoughts. I welcome it. Um, I know time is, time is very precious. So. Thank you for clarifying all of that. That's great. Um, Joe, Paul, you, you can spend more time. You can spend more time, you know, because you can have a look at what the other people uh, wrote in response and I that's one of the aspects I enjoyed about getting involved in that was you know you, you read the post you set up the test site you have a go with it and you can you can spend as much time as you want playing around the the kind of challenge that's set to you by Anne 
And so you can see, for instance, um, Justin Tadlock, he's often taking on these tests and he's publishing his results on the Dopey Tavern website. I love his posts. And I would say he's that, always very yeah, sassy. And I think he does more effort than, mm -hmm. because what he does, instead of just follow, what I did was I just followed the instructions, went through it and, and I just took the experience for what it was and fed back what I felt. Um, but Justin goes a step further, and some of the other people do as well, in that he tries to make the example look great as well. So he's kind of like, I made a 404 page, but I could really use this 404 page in real life. This isn't just, you know, I did what what was there. But then you see you see the, the thread of comments in uh, GitHub or wherever you want to post the different um, your feedback to. And you can see other people um, saying the same kind of thing as you and you do feel right I'm going to comment in support of that comment over there because I totally agree with what that person has said and I know that that was um, really useful to Anne and the team because um, uh, she fed back to us all the, uh, and, and I could see the this, this, this stuff that the small group of people who got involved I saw that have an influence on the next steps and and I can see in that blog post from Josepha uh, Josepha's talking about getting the extenders involved and I know that that was something that myself and other people were worried about and we were trying to come to terms with you know why why is this got to go into core and the fact is we don't need to worry it's going to go into core that's always going to happen at some point and it's not going to, into a core so that everybody's user experience suddenly goes crazy and Wix can do another advert about a disaster or something like that. It's like <laughs> Anne said, no one's really going to see it. It's there for the people like extend. Is it Extendify? You know, Munir Kamal and and his products. It's just people like that and Toolset and theme creators and plugin creators to say, it's in core now. I'm not interacting with a plugin in Gutenberg, I'm interacting with the core set of WordPress for my experiments and, and the products that I'm building. So I think it's uh, cool. The other thing I'd say as well is that I think um, it's helping and the more the more um, outreach uh, and that happens and the more people I think that get involved that aren't necessarily the like I would call, you know, it's probably the wrong word like, but the inner circle in Slack as such, the people who, who are naturally in Slack all the time, because I'm not, um, I came in there and was trying to figure out what I was going and everything. I think the more, the more um, the word can get spread out a little bit more, I think it reduces the fear because me and Nathan were talking about this earlier this week. Um, the, the block editor at Gutenberg, full site editing is not going to destroy page builders and page builders are not going to beat the block editor. It is not a zero sum fight and Wix isn't going to destroy WordPress and WordPress isn't going to destroy Wix. There are millions of people who like to do things the way they do them and there will always be a product, whether it's a big product or a small product or the core set of WordPress that is going to work for it. So I think the the stress of this whole full site editing and the changes in WordPress for me is just reducing all the time. I'm just less concerned about it. And for anyone who is concerned about it, just go and take part in the full site editing, have a little chat with some of the people involved and you'll see. It's uh, it's not it's not as conspiracy theory as we might all think. I you appreciate you saying that. that. That Yeah, I totally, mm. I'm like nodding along the whole time. I totally yeah. agree. <laughs> Hey Joe, anything? Are you are you uh, are you all sorted? What j just just for those of you that are listening to this, Joe's like the consummate professional. There are things technologically it would appear not functioning as he would quite like, but being Joe, he's totally on top of it. He's got six or seven different options <laughs> available to him. If well, my camera you. goes, I'm doomed. That's it. We're, it's all over. But uh, thank you. I thought I was really being clever. I have a little app on my phone. Uh, that relays the camera feed. It also uh, relays the the notifications of setting me, <laughs> uh, which is why I managed to switch back. But thank you, I appreciate that. Um, again, I, I I just I agree with everything that's been said here. I I love uh, and how open the process has been because there is a lot of uh, a lot of nervousness, a lot of consternation around it. And um, I'm I'm using full site editing regularly. I'm trying to do it at least monthly on my live stream or in a, a YouTube yeah, video. Yeah, your and, YouTube videos are awesome. I really I was so stoked when I saw the custom <laughs> four. I was like, yes, this is fantastic. <laughs> and well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And it's 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 largely a really good experience. I loved creating that 404 page. And this week on the docket, I know is last is last week's challenge. 
Um, but uh, I'm I'm just I I love everything you're doing. I love how open uh, everything is, and I'm happy to see uh, the core team trying very hard to get this right um, because it is super important. I think Matt said in the state of the word, right? Um, you know, we need to get phases one and two right, otherwise three and four are doomed. And um, I I. I really see how how much uh, you you do want to get this right, especially with forty percent of the web. And one of the things um, I've noticed is there's there's like the forty percent of the web piece, and then there's also just engaging people in contributions is really hard right now. Like people are going through a lot. Yeah. Um, so there's this dance to get right, and I think this is where um, moving forward sustainably and ethically is really really ever more important, especially as WordPress's share share the market grows. So I'm I'm very excited by the decision process that's happening and. I'm very curious to see how the demo goes this week <laughs> with, with project leadership. Um, I think the 40% the of the web piece is a bit that gets lost, isn't it? The, you know, the other proprietary page builders, they really don't have to worry about 40% of the web. They've got to worry about their own users, and they probably know an awful lot about them, whereas you, in many cases, don't know a great deal about who's using it and what array of plugins they've got and how it may break things. So, yeah, yeah, point well made. It's harder for you, I would imagine, by a country mile. Um, do we, Paul, do you want to do this? Shall we do this query block bit? Or do you, do you think time's pressing yeah. us? Yeah, should we do it? Yeah, okay. I think. Um... Um, in which case, I'm just going to introduce it. I, again, I feel Anne, it's like Anne is primed to, uh, to to feature a lot today. So this is a piece over on WP Tavern. Uh, it's called "All Calling All Themers, Design the Next Round of Query Block Patterns. And it basically it, it brings to us um, the fact that these are coming in the near future. He's, um, you know, as Justin always is, he takes things to pieces and gives it a thorough grilling. But as this is not an area of my expertise, but it is for you, Anne, I, I'm just going to give it to you if that's yeah. all right. Yeah, no, that's great. I actually am working on the next call for testing for full sighting on the query block. I'm coming up, I think, query quest is what I'm going to call it. I don't know. I haven't, nice. I haven't figured out a good, I, I like to have fun names because it's, you know, you got to have fun with this stuff. It's it's cool. It's cool to be on like the cutting edge. But yeah, the query block is kind of what I would call like a power user tool or like we think of it more as a theme author tool where users will more interact with a variation, kind of like a post list block or a latest post. Um, but you can see, yeah, this this preview is what it currently looks like, which isn't, you know, there's a lot to, a lot left to, to be desired with some of this design. But a lot of what's being talked about in this post is um, how can we set up these initial patterns in a way that helps guide the user and actually create like a delightful experience. Like how do we set people up for success with these initial um, patterns? And right now there's an open GitHub issue, which is the, what the post is about, um, asking for people to share what sort of patterns they wanna see. And Justin makes a really, he has a really good comment on there that basically is saying, um, you know, we can't predict, like the, the, the community can't predict everything that people need. I think it's like, um, I wrote it down. Yeah, the Gutenberg team cannot know everything it needs to build without this vital mm. community source. And I want to really underscore that because that is very much the truth. <laughs> um, a lot of the people who are commenting on the GitHub issue are WordPress insiders. And I'd love to see some folks from um, in the community share directly um, what they want to see with these patterns, what they're noticing on the web. Because how cool would it be if a really common pattern that you see across the web that's a, on really cool websites could be integrated directly into core um, as an immediate placeholder setup option. I think that'd be a really amazing um, experience. So I highly encourage if anyone has, maybe they're like a power blogger who really loves to, to blog and pays attention to a lot of sites, like share what you're seeing, share what you're noticing. Um, and who knows, maybe it'll, it'll make it into, into core or make it into future. The pattern directory is coming up as well, which I'm very excited about. And maybe it'll be a, a block pattern that could exist there. So, uh, I'm showing on the screen right now. There you go, Paul. There's, there's what, Justin yeah, sort of with. making it look really nice. Uh, yeah. I think he borrowed some inspiration from Mel. Meltrot, yeah, yeah, um, but it's nice. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Joe or Paul. Seems like there's a good opportunity to get your name in the history books if you can um, contribute some great uh, query block patterns for instance, but I think um, what, I'd, what I'd like about this and also uh, an item that I did remove, but maybe you've still got the link there. There was a, a new theme called the Michelle theme. Is it? I do. Michelle I still theme? have it. I'll put it on the screen. As in the, the name Michelle. Yeah. Yep. And so what I like about this, because you've got, you know, you've got Wix, you've got um, the hosting companies creating their platforms. And then really you, you at the heart of it, you could say that the core team 
is trying to constantly create an alternative to you getting locked into these sort of things. And you see something like the Michelle theme come out and it shipped with something like 67 block That's patterns. That's right, yep. And I think that is a really cool thing because what you've got there is you've got a framework of a theme using the block editor, but it, it's already thought out the design process that you probably need if you like the look of this particular website. Now, Matt Medeiros did a podcast the other day about his favorite WordPress themes, um, which is usually a kind of clickbait sort of title, but I can't remember the theme that he was talking about, but it was similar to this in a way that the theme author had said, this is what this theme is really good at. And I'm giving you all the options to do that really easily within the theme. If you want to go outside of that, you probably want to be kind of skilled in some way, in a technical way or a design way. But if you want to use the theme as I intended it, I'm giving you all the options here. So this Michelle theme has come with um, some some things that kind of lean towards the how I see the future of full site editing as well. Because what we've got here on the screen at the moment is that within the theme, you can identify a block based footer or a block based 404 page. So it seems to me that whether or not you like the interface that the core team create for full site editing, that the third parties will probably not even have you use that interface if you are a no code or a low code kind of person. You'll come be coming in, the plugins that allow you to create your websites will be hooking into the full site editing experience but you won't see it. It will be like this in this side panel of what we can see on the screen at the moment where it, it will have uh, a, things, a little wizard, create your footer. Here's some examples. There you go. Here's footer number one, footer number two, footer number three. I'll have number foot, footer number three. Okay, that's the one you've chosen. Let's now go and create your, your header. So I can see that block patterns and onboarding experiences and wizards and third parties can work together to take what the core team is doing and, and make some really cool things like um, like what this Michelle theme is is doing with its 67 block patterns. And the, 404 the was, footers, it would say, oh. No, for, for, uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was pretty interesting how the the author basically hacked together this like editing the, the block ready for Yeah, that's right. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. that's super but it but it shows that there's a desire for this and that it's like people are, you know, chomping at the bit waiting for these tools to be released. And like this what he's creating here, a future theme update could just integrate directly with core. Um, rather than using kind of a hacky reusable block solution, um, which I think is pretty brilliant. I was like, well, that's, that's pretty interesting. It, yeah. It's obvious that these tools are needed and that theme authors, um, you know, the 67 block patterns, uh, that's, that's, we always have that thing where it's like, oh, I saw this really cool theme, but I want my site to look like that. How do I do that, right? And having integrated block patterns where you can um, not only make it look like the theme demo, but also like level it up even more because there's 67 block patterns, I think is so cool. Um, and helping set users up for success. I think it's really exciting. And the starter content comment. Yeah, there's just so much good coming from this. And this is, I very much agree that it, it should be the future of themes where theme authors can actually set users up for success rather than just giving them the bare bones um, and letting them loose to figure it out. <laughs> it's like, no, literally here's how I made this, this homepage section, you know, and actually giving them that directly. Thank you, Anne. Joe, anything on that one? Yeah, I think this is great just to to go off Anne's point. Um, like the starter content stuff, especially and making themes look like, I mean, this is like a pain point from like the theme forest days, right? Like you download this beautiful theme and then you're like, how do I do this? Uh, and <laughs> Genesis and Studio Press has, has helped a little bit and other themes have like the starter templates, but with block patterns, like imagine installing a theme and then going like, which demo did you like? And then it just happens. You don't have to download extra plugins or extra assets or extra anything. You just have those blocks that come with the theme. I think that's, I think that's amazing. And then going back to the query block, like that's, I'm really stoked that this is like the next problem you're solving, right? Because, uh, um, or there, the team is solving because, um, in in playing with uh, the query block a little bit, I'm like, you know, it'd be nice if you could almost get like a little bit more granular where you can design what you want a uh, archive post to look like and then right. that get built in and stuff like that. So um, uh, again, I just, I, I can't say enough nice things about how like what, like such a great job the full site editing team is doing. I'm really excited. It's, it, it's either based on, on feedback or experience use. You, you all seem to be uh, doing a really good job of intuiting what 
the next step is. I'm going to I'll encourage everybody to, in. yeah, I'm going to encourage everybody to just quickly rewind about 20 minutes and listen to what Anne said about how you can get involved so that you can get involved. Um, and with that, I'm going to move us along and I'm going to go to, what am I going to go to? Paul, I'm going to go to you because you put this one in because this is something that you're involved in. This is the GoDaddy Summit that's happening really soon. No. But is it? No, 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 it's, it's not. not. No, it's, I uh, apologize. It's I thought you'd just, put it in for that reason. That's okay. Sorry. No, the summit is a different thing that um, we were talking about the other week. This is actually just their meetup. Uh, they have like a weekly meetup in Europe and a weekly meetup in in uh, the States. And um, so they invited me a couple of weeks ago to um, run one of the meetups, which is the one that I'm doing if you is oh yeah so I'm talking about I think the title changed a few times actually um when it got marketed so I was like oh I need to change uh change my uh, talk <laughs> a little <I'm> bit <laughs> so yeah so now it's definitely seems to be the best marketing tools for your WordPress website but um I totally invite people to come along um it's on it's in about three hours from now if you go to the events.godaddy.com you can sign up an RSVP there and and it's like a, just a 20 25 minute um talk from me and then just a, a group discussion I think I don't know if that happens with everybody on a zoom call or if there's or if there's people commenting in in the zoom I don't know if it's that way around I'm not sure but just to give you kind of a hint of the kind of direction I used to be addicted to buying tools as Nathan knows it, you know we, we were both probably a bit addicted no to I wasn't tools addicted no, no 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 yeah I was yeah 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 no if, if yeah I'm, I'm sure we all know the truth we have a sumo and all that stuff yeah um and my philosophy has totally changed in the in the last year or so where I'm very much you know less moving parts uh, keep things simple so a good chunk of my talk is really going to be about not using all the tools and then just focusing in on a little case study of what might work well as a, as a small light tool set for WordPress if you are an agency or a freelancer looking to uh, get clients and, and those kind of things because I've got experience in that and I've done it all wrong and I've done it all right. No, I haven't. Have you ever done it I, I knew, all at the same time? I knew time. what was right. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I never knew. I never done it per, um, perfectly, but I um, I know where I went wrong and I've seen the, uh, so I just want to ch share some of that knowledge and uh, GoDaddy invited me to do that. So it's not their main event. It's the, it's the meetups that they do every week. This is the first piece of news we've ever featured, which is actually going to be stale by the time most people are watching it. So mm. let's quickly try to read the gigantic <laughs> URL. I can't. It's enormous. Just Google. Uh, no, if you just go to events.godaddy.com, I think you can okay. just go there. Events.godaddy.com. Yeah. Paul will be there in about three hours. He's only just learned what the title is, but I'm sure it'll be. Uh... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll, I'll prepare the talk after, after this podcast. I'm <laughs> yeah. sure it'll be amazing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I completely misunderstood why you put that one in. I'm sorry about that. Um, right. Next one is just a quick shout out for me, for a, f a friend of mine. Well, a friend of, I think, Paul, you know him as well. This is Tom Carlos from AB Split Test. Uh, it's a YouTube video outlining the fact that he's updated his AB Split Test plugin. Um, he's completely redone the UI. The video takes about four minutes. If you're a current owner of the product, you'll have to get familiar with a, a, a new and easier UI. He's also added full page split testing in, which is a brand new feature, which he never had before. And basically, you just tick some boxes. You go in and you say, I want to test this page against this page. Or you can do 10 pages if you really want to. I think he says something along the lines of, if your sanity can cope with split testing 10 pages, then you can do that. And he's also got integrations with EDD, WooCommerce, and WP Pizza, which is quite a quirky third one to throw in there but there you go yeah. so uh ab split test has a nice big update today mm. and forgive jo me Ann, have you oh. have you tried have you seen this product uh, i watched the AB video test? i thought it was really cool that woocommerce was mm. integrated i could see that being the most valuable right now yeah. um I, I was like kind of hoping he would have that integrated and whenever i saw it in the video um i thought it was pretty yeah. cool i Is have it, not it integrates totally with the block editor doesn't it it's uh Sorry, you go, Jay. You haven't oh, seen no, it, no, but you, you should. Know, no, you should no have problem. a look. Yeah, I haven't, yeah. but now I'm going to check that out and also get pizza because now I want pizza. 
Yeah, the mm. mere mention of the word pizza is all it takes for most of us to sort of salivate. Yeah. I've had to and start like, drinking water. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm a New York Italian, so like, if you just like start to say it, like if you say pizzazz, I want pizza too. So, but what even is WP Pizza? I'm guessing it's a plugin to enable you to set up your own pizza, real real pizza shop to sell it to the world, right? I'm guessing. I brick know. oven, yeah, brick it's, oven. Looks like it's to keep track of online orders, right? Oh, yeah, that's and who got. wouldn't need that right now if you're a pizza right. joint? That would have mm. been, I bet they've had a, a bumper year. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so there you go. Go and check that out. And lastly, forgive me, I'm going to plug something, and that is, I'm going to do this really quick, uh, pagebuildersummit.com. We're running the Page Builder Summit again, um, and if you want to sign up, you can, oh, I should probably show it on the screen. That's hopeless, isn't it? Pagebuildersummit.com. If you're interested, you can join the wait list by clicking that pink button and filling in a form. And that's my piece on that. Go and check it out. But I think we've run out of things to say. We probably haven't run out of things to say, but I've got nothing else to say. Paul, anything I missed? I got nothing. Good. Nothing. It's always good when Paul mm. says he's got nothing. It means the show is coming to an end. Um, we do often mention things that we're going to do during the course of this week. Obviously, Paul's got a whole bunch of stuff in the next four hours. Bless him. Um, but uh, anything else, Paul, this week? Um, I'm getting a new picture for my wall as part of my uh, studio <laughs> project. I'm going to interrupt. I'm sorry. I can't wait for it to arrive. If, yeah. you, if you watch this show, you'll have noticed that, I mean, my background is pretty terrible. Um, Paul has really raised the bar this week. Paul, has, Paul <laughs> do you mind me saying that? Well, I, you've moved house. Good, it's yeah. too late. I've said it. Um, yeah, yeah, that helps. And he's moved house. Yeah. And so he's he's got himself all technoed up with colorful backgrounds got and my posh own cameras office and... in my house oh. for the first time in my life i've always had to rent an office because we've never had a room in the house for it and now i've got my own office with my stuff my xbox is there my blue light i'm loving it and i've got a gigantic picture of milky way to go on that wall back there is that what's coming that. oh nice yeah. yeah. Can I just say? You should see lose. what it looks like from here, though. The bit I'm looking at is basically everything that was on that desk before the show. <laughs> yeah. On, yeah. We're all the it's same. All, I, it's all fake. It's all yeah. fake. I bet you if we turned the yeah. camera on Joe and Anne, there'd be clutter. Yeah, exactly the same. Can I just make a recommendation? Lose the Xbox. Nothing's going to happen, is it? Let's be honest. It's <laughs> just going to get really into the Xbox. Anyway, moving on. Anything happening this week, Joe? Anything exciting? Well, uh, similar to Paul, I'm getting a new picture right over here. It's uh, a combination of WandaVision and the Haunted Mansion. If you've ever been to the Haunted Mansion at Disney Ooh. World or Disneyland, they have those uh, elongated pictures, and there's a, a one in a WandaVision style I'm super stoked on. But aside from that, I will be working on my next set of YouTube videos and uh, an update to my uh, Gutenberg course, which will have a whole section on full site editing. So. Where can we find the YouTube channel and the Gutenberg course? Where do we go for those? You For the YouTube channel, you can go to casabona.live. Uh, when I don't have a live stream there, it just redirects to my YouTube channel. Uh, and the courses are over at creatorcourses.com. Thank you so much. Um, I, I feel I need a picture now. I'm just, Anna, are you getting a picture this week? I'm such a minimalist. It's like, no, there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny to hear. I keep forgetting that you can you can do that. <laughs> like it's like, oh, I could I could spruce up the background, but <laughs> yeah. I, I never it never occurs to me. I've always been the person with like empty walls, which is really funny. I have a lot of friends being like, How do you live like this? I'm like, it's great. White space, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anything this week? I actually have a big presentation um, for WordPress Mega Meetup uh, talking about full sighting. So if you ever want to get like a deep dive on everything, I've I recorded the presentation last week and I'm getting feedback today and probably I'm going to have to re-record again. Um, it's pushing on 30 minutes right now, um, not including Q&A. So trying to condense it, but also make sure it's really high impact. But that's the, the big thing coming up. It's on Thursday, probably best for folks in um, the US or in Asia Pacific, but it's at 6.30 p.m. Eastern um, on the 15th. So I'm really excited about that. And Have you got a really URL for that? Is that an easy one to say or... Yeah, well, no, it's it's if you go to the meetup, um, how would I share this? Hmm. Maybe if you went to it's on meetup.com. Okay. But it's uh, SF hyphen WordPress hyphen users, and then they'll that'll be the latest event that's on there. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, if, if you send us the link, we put yeah, it in. Yeah, I'll just say I'll drop uh, you the link. Yeah. yeah. Dave Bissett also tweets it a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm really bummed because I have 
my own meetup that I organized at that same time. So I'm going to have to catch the replay later. I can send you the video. I'm going to be oh, recording it. That's, what it's all <laughs> yeah. about. that's a personal touch here. You get the actual video from the, the extra two minutes at the end where you forgot to turn the camera off. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I'm, I'm not getting a picture this week. I'm just going to be editing video and things like that, but hopefully, hopefully it'll be a fairly stress-free week. The kids are going back to school in the UK, so I'll have a bit more, a bit more time and space, but, um, Okay, hey, that's our this shops week. are opening, aren't they? Our oh, shops are opening such today. a big thing! Is it today? Yeah, since the end of middle middle ish before Christmas, yeah. the shops shot. All of them shot. The only shops that have been allowed to open in the UK are um, food shops, basically. And today, they're all allowed to open again. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. as is always the case, I will be avoiding them like the plague. Because right, I that's really exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like <Yeah>. Shopping. <laughs> I get. I get my. Uh, second dose of the vaccine tomorrow i'm so Amazing. excited yeah oh good for you yeah. that is good news yeah so in in a, just a matter of days you'll be fully fully yep. kitted out yeah my wife the, and i have planned multiple date nights oh that's great that's so cool isn't it do you have a passport right. system where you are are they gonna sort of demand uh, some certification or? uh no um and uh, i mean like so yeah, we have those cards, and I will have. I I bought a laminator just to laminate it, um, <laughs> but uh, we don't have anything. Official, Once a teacher, official. always a teacher, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can it be laminated? Yes, yes. laminated yes. then. Yeah. Laminated reminds me of that Friends episode. But uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a big discussion going on about whether that uh, the pros and cons of having okay. a passport system. But if I'm asked, I will gladly show it wherever. And of course, oh, we'll still mask well, up and everything. I'm really pleased. It seems like um, it seems like the US are doing great guns with the the vaccination effort. So I'm really pleased for both of you. Uh, hopefully, and just showed hers on the screen. I have so, won yeah. my first dose, which I got very yeah. lucky. Um, got an appointment on April third, so I'm yeah considering awesome. for my age range. And so I'm like, yes, it's amazing. Yes, I got it this yes. exactly yeah. the same for me because I'm you know 28 or something, and um, <laughs> and I've had my first one. <laughs> Paul yeah, hasn't is, had his because he's 21. Yeah. Oh, this is the first Mine's time that being, being husky has uh, like really worked out for me. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend who's a smoker who's same thing. She got in North Carolina. They had a smoking rule, and she was, I was like, I've never been so happy you smoked. Like I was just. Like, <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, this is the typical segue at the end where you know uh, we should probably just end the show. We will be back next week. I can't honestly remember who is going to be on the show. But an absolute pleasure, as always, co-host Paul Lacey. And uh, thank you so much to Joe Casabona and to Anne. And we've got that typical awkward wave moment coming up. Thanks a lot, guys. See you.